This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. There is a very important verse that we're using, calling the Creator in His name, and then asking from Him to open our lips that our mouth will praise Him. Before we're about to pray, we're expressing our understanding, we're admitting, facing the fact that if He won't give us the power of speech, we won't be able to talk. Even just to say, I need something, I want to have something, I hope for something, it's not something that we believe that is in our power to achieve on our own, to pray even, just to ask. We know that all of our powers are coming in an act of grace from above, from heaven. Now when a person is standing with that deep understanding that all of the powers and all of his qualities and all of his talents and his wisdom and, and everything he has is a free gift from the Creator to him, so that understanding is filling him with gratitude and appreciation. And with that power of goodwill, we're trying to see what we can do to give back from that goodness that we received and how we can transform those amazing gifts that we received from heaven to make our lives important and useful for the purpose that we've been created for. The world as of today is in such a dark place that people lost their connection even inside their houses, even inside the families. Couples cannot relate to each other. The distance between the bodies, between people, became so strong and, and so even violent that we're not able to communicate. And people feel so disconnected and so rejected and everyone feels so bad with himself and so low and so broken and criticized and, 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 and abused that we're walking terrified, lost in the dark and looking for outlets, looking for, for ways to communicate, to come back to something familiar, to something good and finding it very hard. Now, today while we drove for five and a half hours We were thinking, when you drive in the U.S., especially on the highways, you can see many churches and many, like the cross, huge crosses on, on the sides of, of the highways. And in our mind, my wife and I, we were thinking, many of the towns, many, many of the cities are very religious. We came, we went to a certain store and it was written over there some signs, if you love Jesus, like the store of, the, of, of Jesus lovers, like, oh. and a person in the store, she, she tells me, she's asking me, she's, oh, I'm also religious, she's, she's asking me, is that store religious? Is it a religious store? I told her, a store is not religious. A store is a store. The owner might be religious, but the store is a store. It's just like, you know, walls and, and shelves and products. The store is not religious. But it was a very religious area. And when people saw us over there, they thought we're Hamish. And they start asking us about the Hamish culture. And I told them, we're Jewish. I'm Jewish. We're not Hamish. And like a lot of issues of religion came up while we drove today. And then my wife, she asked me, 
uh, some questions about Muslims, millions of Muslims around the world. Is the Muslim religion is a bigger, larger religion than Christianity? Both religions are so so huge and so powerful, and 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 also inside of them different streams, and also in Judaism the same thing. Like many groups, you know, different communities, different traditions, and we were discussing it and, and, and talking about it. And then my wife, she said, why do we need all those religions? For what? The dividing is supposed to be between good people and bad. And that's it. Like, why we need all this craziness when, in reality, it doesn't really help. If you would really divide the nations to religions, and it would bring something good out of it, so I understand, great, okay, let's all join to the one that will shine the world and will follow it, because we're looking for God, good. But if inside each and every one of those religions, you have good people and bad, wonderful, amazing people and evil people that not belong to our life at all, so what's the benefit of religions? What's the benefit of all of that? And I think, in my reality, when I observe on my life, I'm a person that started his journey in life with no connection to my religion. Even though that I born Jewish, to an Israeli family in Israel, my family was not a traditional family. We were not keeping the seventh day of Shabbat. We were not eating the food that is allowed by the Bible, by the Torah. We were not observant to keep. We were not orthodox. We were not religious. We lived secular life, far from Torah, far from obligations, like free. And when I realized in my inner search of finding a true thing in my life because I was seeking for the truth that I am Jewish, I start checking about my roots and then I found my Judaism. But it's not that now as a Jewish person I think that my Judaism is a flag that I should go and wave. Why? Because the fact that I'm Jewish is the only reason that I'm connected to Judaism. And another person doesn't need to connect to Judaism if Judaism doesn't shine to him. But if Judaism shines to him, so it shines. When we came in the first times that we traveled to the U.S., we met few Native American people. And they were very nice. I have few students that are also Native Americans. And when we came here, we learned a lot to do because of like, you know, in, in reality, we met something culture-wise that we never been exposed to in Israel. You don't have Native Americans in Israel, right? Barely. And when we came here, suddenly we met and we heard more. And also because that Israeli, the Jewish people, suffered from a lot of decrees and, and went through the Holocaust and millions of our people died and executed, we feel a certain connection to the Native Americans here that also suffered badly in, in their history. And when, we, when I a little bit like put my mind to that culture, I thought about their faith. And it's very easy for a person that is religious to disqualify different religions with different opinions because that they are not worshipping the same name, the same definition of God. They were able to pray to the God of fire, to God of water, to the God of eagles, to the God of winter, of wind, whatever. They had their faith. And I claim to believe in something that I think that it's the highest thing of them all, that it's the most divine faith in the world. I can claim, but when with an honest way of, of observation, honest look, I will try to put my mind into their culture, I would understand that they really, in those days, were experiencing those experiences that established their faith. 
they felt the spirit talking to them from the fire. They felt, they heard the voice talking from the wind between the trees. They saw it moving on the grass. They felt it. When they were praying in their way of praying, they have been answered or else they wouldn't pray again to that source of energy, to that source of good based on their faith means that their faith was right for them in their life, in their days, at least enough that I won't criticize it. That I won't think that I'm better than them because I'm different. Because if I am an arrogant person that thinks about himself that he is right, so if I would born a Native American, I would disqualify Judaism. Because every arrogant person is just selfish, and self-centered, and that's why he's disqualifying and erasing and canceling different opinions only because he wants to protect his own. And he wants to feel that he is above everyone else. So he's just like making axes on everyone and erasing everyone and establish his own arrogance and his own honor and pride above everyone else. And by that he feels better with himself, but that is not a method to reveal the truth. Because the truth, the verse is saying that the truth is growing from the ground. The truth is to be humble. And a wise and humble person is a person that is able to learn from everyone. It's true that I'm Jewish and it's great for me. I'm Jewish. That's my life. That's who I am. That's who my mother she is. And that's why I'm Jewish. And as a Jewish person I have my journey. But you might be different than I, and you have your journey. Now, it doesn't mean that you should stick to the faith of your parents, of your tradition. You should find your roots. You should find your true self. The Afro-Americans that today are Christians, Christianity is not their basic religion. Native Americans that today are Christians, Christianity is not their original religion, so also Christians that their ancestors are Christians. Also Jewish people, where Judaism started from Abram. And Abram is testifying on himself that his father was worshipping idols. Every person should investigate in the roots of his soul who he is and why. You can say, I don't feel like it, I don't want to, like, I have my business, what are you talking about? Like, I have my life. There is something very unique, the seed of a person, the soul of a person that is passing to him from his parents is a spark that was connected to the earlier soul of his parents. Every person is built from a physical body that it is his vehicle and on top of that body there is a thread, a rope, a spiritual rope that is the soul of the person. Now that soul is tied above every head of every human being and when a couple are getting married and they're bringing a child to the world so part of, of of that rope is being delivered with that child to become to be his own soul so now it's an individual soul that is getting stronger and wider and more connected to that person but in reality that thread was part of an earlier rope in the mind connected to the soul of his parents and in an earlier generation, that thread was also in the soul of his grandparents and great-grandparents. So your soul, that today is your soul, is not a fresh soul, 20 years old soul, 50 years old soul, 70 years old soul, no. You have an ancient soul from the days of creation that is passing from one generation to the next for thousands and thousands of years, according to our belief, until today, that today it's been divided to be your individual soul. 
And that's why I feel that I need to make that investigation to find myself, to know who I am, who were my ancestors, really to check because I feel a spiritual connection to my past. And this is why when I'm talking and I am coming, I'm not coming as a religious mm, mm, speaker or, or, or preacher or something like that, not as a Jewish rabbi, and I'm also not a qualified rabbi to speak. I'm a person. I'm a human being with my life experience. And I'm searching for the truth from age of 18, 19. When I was a child, I lived my life like a regular child. When I grew up, I felt very not comfortable with my life. I had many difficulties in my journey. As a secular person, the, 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 the friends and community that I was surrounded with, the family, I never felt like I found my place. I never fit nowhere. And until today, I'm an outsider in every situation. And even when I woke up to understand that I need to have meaningful life, life with a purpose, and I found my inner connection to God because I started to believe, because I recognized that there is an individual supervision on my life, and that my life was not only my needs and my desires or my fears and my pressures. I felt that there is a divine purpose. I saw how the Creator was interfering in my life and certain messages came to me and certain understandings and thoughts that I had and questions being answered and I saw many coincidences that suddenly I realized that they were not coincidences. It was supervised from heaven. I saw how the puzzle is being built one part after the next and I realized Something is talking to me through the walls, from the wind, from the bonfires, from in situations. I felt the creation was communicating with me, was calling me to believe, to recognize. So as a person that found some truth inside of himself, I found also my connection to my religion. And then I became Jewish. I start being more observant and I start keeping the mitzvot that Jewish people are obligated by the rules of the Torah. And I start putting tefillin, I will start keeping Shabbat, eating kashrut, kosher food, and all those things that I felt related to. I felt like I want to do those things, but not because of the commandment, not because of the Jewish rules, just because that I felt that I felt found my place in a way. But until today, my wife told me a few years ago, you became religious, it's called a Baal Tshuva, you are doing Tshuva, you're, you're coming closer to the Creator for many, many years, and until today, you have not became religious. You are a truth seeker. You're not a religious person. Even though I'm dressed religious, even though I am very observant, what that I'm seeking for is not religion. What that I'm seeking for is an answer to my inner questions. What that I'm seeking for is an answer to my fears. I'm seeking for answer to what that goes on in the world, to things that are happening around me, and I'm trying them, I'm finding them hard to explain. And as a person like that, I'm standing in front of you and offering to you to look for answers on your own. To try to find that path on your own. Not to follow people. Not to follow communities. Not to follow people that are standing in, 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 in power position with, with, with certain opinions and methods and to follow their guidings. I'm inviting and calling you to search on your own. To be brave and to call that God that you believe in and ask Him to reveal to you His truth. King David was, was, was asking the Creator, Hadricheni ba'amitecha, guide me in the path of your truth. Even though that he was a genius and he was so righteous and pure and he knew all the rules that are written in the Bible by heart. He was a righteous man. But still he, he knew that he should ask from the Creator 
to guide him in the path of truth, of his truth. Because life can bribe you, life can attempt you, life can suggest for you different options and different things that will distract your thoughts, that will pull your mind to different options and to take you to wander and lose years of your life searching for things that are not as important as things that are much more meaningful as finding the good qualities that are treasured inside of you because we still don't know who we are we have such a great potential when you look at famous people in reality today when we are humbled by life and we're not that rich and not that successful and not that big large or whatever accepted honored i don't know what when we are still feel as small people, when we look at greater people than us, so to speak, in our, in the eyes of our imagination, who that we think that he is greater than us, so we admire him. He looks so beautiful to us. He looks so amazing, so inspiring. We look up to those people. But if you really gonna look with eyes of truth, you're gonna recognize that that person, even though that he can sit on thrones of honor, he can talk on stages, he can bring thousands of people to work for him and to fire them all in one day. Even if you if he's so powerful, if you're going to look at that person's eye, you're going to recognize that he's just a regular human being. He's like me and you. What's the difference between us to him? There is no difference. Just he's standing in a different position. It might be that he's working even less than you, that you're working even harder than him. It might be that you are wiser than him, more gifted and more talented. Just from heaven, they put him in a certain place, but he's a regular human being. And why am I saying that? That you won't lose your self-esteem and won't try to compare yourself to someone else because you are the best no matter which level you're holding at. You think to yourself that someone else is better than you because he has more money, he has more power, he has more knowledge, I don't know what. But in reality, he's a regular person, exactly like you. And he is holding in a certain greatness only because that from heaven they put him in that place. But in one moment they can take him down. And in one moment they can rise you and bring you up to a place that no man ever walked in that place before. And we don't know how the Creator calculates his moves and how he's running the wheels of creation and how things will change in one day. But we believe that the Creator is the God of truth. And He is the righteous God. And He is the God of kindness, of love, of honesty, of respect. And we, when we want to connect ourselves to Him, we need to work on our attributes, on our manners, on how our behavior, just to be righteous, just to be good, to be as pure as we can. And if, by the way, you're also religious, Enjoy your life being religious. Try not to be ridiculous with your ceremonies and, 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 <laughs> and tradition. Try to connect yourself to reality while worshipping what you believe. Try to believe in something realistic and not in nonsense. And I'm talking on all, the, uh, on all that rainbow of options of, of religions and, and communities and, 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 and streams inside religions. You can go crazy and claim to be the purest and the holiest and whatever. And in reality, you're just a crazy person, sick in your mind and, 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 and acting foolish. Or that you can be humble and then it doesn't really matter to which religion you are connected to. Because really, you are being judged on who you were, on who you are, who you are when you're talking who you are when you're eating, who you are when you're selling, when you're buying. Those are the real questions about the human being. They're not asking you, are you Jewish? Are you a Christian? Are, this is, th those are questions that are being asked in the entrance to the synagogue or to the church or to the mosque. Or th those are questions that people are asking. 
In heaven, they're not asking you for your religion. They're asking you for your character, who you are, who you were, what were you doing, how you were spending your time. Did you give portion of your income to charity? Were you giving portion of your time to people in need? Were you giving a portion of your wisdom to people that were not educated as you? Did you share from your life experience? Did you give from your wisdom, from your talents to the community, to the company, to people in need? Those are the giants and the greatest people of the world. Those ones that were able to grow out from their selfishness, from their narrow mindset, and to set themselves free to go and help others with no connection to religion or to communities or to nations. All those definitions are definitions of the physical world. Color of your skin, the sound of your accent, the family you came, those are all the character, lines of character of your body, of your vehicle. Who you are is your soul, is not your body. When a person passed away, he died, you're not going to keep on talking to his body, to his physical flesh. You're going to talk to the soul that already rise to heaven. You are not your body. You are your soul. You are the spirit that lives inside of you. If you try to recognize yourself in the mirror, you are suffering from a horrible mistake. Trying to find yourself in the color of your skin, in the color of your eyes, in the sound of your accent. Those are all results of the exile, that the nation's been exiled and suffered from war and took in captivity and been tortured and been raped and been destroyed and slavered and slaughtered and suffered and been exiled from one land to the other. Who you are, you still don't know. Because when you try to go and look for the roots of your family to find your ancestors, the road is blocked. You don't know who you are. You think you're Christian and you're Jewish. You think you're Jewish and you're Muslim. You think you're Muslim and you're Christian. You don't know who you are. Physical body is not an evidence for who you are. Your soul is the only evidence for who you are. So stop judging yourself based on your shape and your body. And start connecting yourself to who you really are from within. And you, from within, a godly soul, a holy spirit, a portion of heaven from above. You are a pillar of light that is able to think, to feel, to sense, to smell, to see, to hear, to taste, to understand one thing from the other. You are a wise, intelligent spirit. You're not a physical body. Your body is limited in shape, in weight, in power. But your soul is eternal. And to that we must connect ourselves with all the power we have. And also when we're going and we're meeting people out there in the world, it's the only thing that we should do with them when we connect ourselves to them it's to try to find the root of their souls to connect ourselves to their spirits and not to base our relationship with people on their physical bodies from which community you are coming from from which religion you are coming from I have a line of number one best friends and they're from different nations. They're from different communities. They're from different sections and parts and lands in the world. They're different people in character and in languages. And they're my best friends. They're walking with me in one line. And we're one community, one group, with one heart, with one soul. Because we're all seeking for one thing, the truth. We're looking for justice, we're looking for love, for kindness, for respect and support to the righteous people, to those poor ones, to the broken ones. We care about each other, so we're, it makes us together. Our affection and our respect makes us one, not our religion, not our tradition.
not our family members and how much money we have in our banks. Only our desire to do good and to go and to spread good in the world. Because in the future when the third temple will come down made out of fire to this world. So the Creator Himself said it in the Bible. And He said, because my house will be the house of prayer to all nations. To all nations. It will be called the house of prayer to all nations. It means that everyone are welcome. That everyone are called and invited to come and to call Him in His name. Now when everyone are welcome, how can I be more important than you? If you're welcome as well and I don't know who you are, how can I be better than you? How can I be greater than you? If the Creator, the one that gave me life and gave you life as well, He called us both to come. So how can you be better than me or I can be better than you? We need to drop those nonsense. But if still in your tradition you have certain obligations, so you can keep your obligations. If you feel like getting married with your own nation, if you so great. No one forced you to marry my sister or my brother. No, it's great. You can marry whoever you feel like married. I don't push you to do anything. I just want to give you your place to be able to grow. I want you to give me my place to grow. I want us both to grow together. You feel like doing something good in your life in that way? Do it. Don't hurt me. I don't hurt you. I want you to be who you are. I want you to find the, 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 the presence that you've been gifted with from the Creator that created you in your shape, with your traditions, with your, with your life story. In your colors, with your shape, with your qualities, qualities that I don't have. Because He created me with mine, with my nature, with my power, with my gifts. And I want to receive the permission to be who I am, that you will respect who I am, that we will be able to respect each other. This is the secret of the true believers. That they believe that the Creator, He created everyone and His love is on all of His creations. In the Bible it's written that when Moses opened the sea for the Israel nation to cross the sea in dry land, when we ran away from the Egyptians that tried to kill us after hundreds of years of being slavered over there in Egypt, the nation of Israel were able to escape and to run when the sea was opened. We crossed the sea and then the Egyptian soldier, they ran after us to kill us. They wanted to slaughter us because they, they regret on the fact that they let us go and they wanted to kill us. While they crossed the sea, the Creator said to the sea to cover on the ancient Egyptians, it's not the same Egyptians of today, it's a different nation that disappeared from the world. And the sea covered the Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians, and they all died except of Pharaoh, except of their king that had been pushed to the sea, to the, to the shore. And the angels in heaven were praising the Creator on the miracle that He made with the Israel nation to save them from their enemy. What the Creator did, when the angel praised Him for drowning the ancient Egyptians in the sea, the Creator told His angels to shut their mouths. He told them, are you praising Me when My creations are drowning in the sea? The Creator was sad and upset even when cruel people with bad intentions that went to kill an innocent nation in those days were drowning and being punished. Even if it had been punished by Him, even if they had been punished by His decree, when He punished them and drowned them in the sea, He felt the sorrow on their death. 
He doesn't want to kill no one. He doesn't want to see his creation going lost in the depths of the sea, drowning in the storm. He doesn't want to see that. He cannot accept no praises when people are suffering, when people are humiliated, when people are being crushed. <clears throat> and even if people are evil and they're suffering, the Creator is not happy with that. He would look for another way. He would try to find another way how to bring peace between the nations, how to bring understanding between people. But when people's mind is focused on physicality, on physical definitions, my tradition, your tradition, my color, your color, your, your, your tradition, my tradition, then we are being divided and separated from each other. But when our mind is focusing on the spiritual aspect of our life, to find the souls, suddenly we can communicate with peace, with understanding, without feeling obligating not to change for you and not that you will change for me. We're just being able to sit in one place and to feel okay with each other. To feel that it's alright to look for the truth from different angles. Because truth there is only one. But there are millions of ways to reach that truth. And you don't need to walk in my path to reach my truth. You can walk on your own path. Like the beams of light that are coming out from the sun. It's only one star that's hanging in the sky. That is shining to the wide world. But it's shining to so many directions. And you have your direction. You have your route. You have your path, your lane to walk in. And you should walk on it with honesty and with pride. In humility. In kindness. With respect to all of your siblings, to all of your partners that are walking to your right, are walking to your left. And to let everyone seek together. Because from your understandings I can grow. And from my understandings you can grow. I can share the music I can, I can make. And you can share from the art that you can paint. You can sing and I can play. You can dance and I can walk. You can work and I can design. Everyone got different talents, different abilities. If every individual is going to try to build everything from zero, we won't get nowhere. Only our cooperation, only the fact that we're working together, leaning on the wisdom of different nations, of different cultures, cooperating together. Those are wise in technology. Those are amazing in, in, in different aspects. Everyone, those in science, those are investigating, those are praying, those are very spiritual, those are making amazing wooden crafts. I don't know, every nation with their talents, every person with his qualities are all needed for the true secret and beauty of creation, the greatness of the Creator, to be revealed. Think about a nat the world of nature without all those amazing species. It's gray. It's not as colorful and beautiful. Which is the most beautiful animal in the world? One will say a cheetah, one will say a deer, one will say a panda bear, one will say a koala bear. Everyone will choose some birds, butterflies. Okay, let's make a world only with butterflies. The most beautiful, but it's, it's boring. No cheetahs, no elephants anymore, no, no cows, no deers, no goats, no lions. No, it's, it's, it's boring. Only Jewish, only Christians, Catholics. It's boring. You're amazing, but boring. <laughs> like, I also have something to give. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you're not, your eyes are not open, but like that you know that you have something. I also have something to give. But for that, we need to open our hearts. We need to open our arms. We need to accept each other. We need to let each other grow and be who you are. I don't need you to be mine. You cannot be me. 
And I cannot be you. I don't need you to be on my side. I need to be with you. I don't need to be like you. I want you to sing in your voice. Your voice is amazing. I want to hear your lyrics. Your lyrics are fantastic. Your culture is so beautiful. You have amazing things that you carry for generations. Things that my nation never been blessed with. We have different blessings, different gifts that we received. You have your flow, you have your culture, you have your wisdom, you have your senses, you have your abilities. And you should be open to accept others and to search for the truth. It means to search for the truth that will give life and peace and love and honor and respect to everyone. Like that when redemption day will come, all the animals will be able to live together without no predators and no, no, no death and no more, no more hatred between the species. Just everyone will live calmly and happily together like it was in heaven in the earliest days of creation. That's exactly what it will happen to the people, to, to human beings, to the nations. We will be able to live among each other freely with love and respect, with no arguments, with no contradictions. Just you going to serve the Creator and find yourself and be who you are with respect, without desire to ruin and sabotage other cultures and nations. And I will do the same to you. Why? Because the Creator will remove the bad attributes of anger, of jealousy, all those fake fears that are based on nothing, that are based on foreign faiths, on, on imaginations, on bad attributes. And when He will remove those curtains, that darkness from the world, we will just appreciate and love each other and respect each other for being who we are. You for being who you are, and me for being who I am. Because I, I haven't made myself, and you haven't made yourself. There is one God that He knows better than both of us, exactly how to create and design His world. And we just need to hold the hands and sing Kumbaya. No, that was a joke. <laughs> just to hold hands together and to live our life in peace. And this is my speech. And by the way, I'm Jewish. But I'm not going and waving it because I am Jewish. That's my thing. And you can be who you are. And it's okay. And we still can seek and look for the truth together. We're not enemies because we're different. And inside the houses it's the same. Inside the houses we're suffering from the same thing. A man and a wife and their children can suffer from disagreements and arguments. And you're in the same boat. You're in the same house, sitting on the same sofa, watching the same show, supposed to be so happy together. Like there is such a huge world that is around you that you need to deal with, that you're now just making wars and fights in the house. You're like draining yourselves instead of building yourselves. Working on ways of communication, building patience to each other, hugging each other, loving each other, listening to each other, learning how to communicate, how to relate, how to feel, how to be patient with each other, how to love and respect each other. That's our mission, to be better people, to be the best people we can be. And based on that, to reveal the light of truth in the world. And the seal of the Creator is the seal of truth. When we're being loyal and truthful, His light is shining through us out to the world. And then when people will look at you, they will feel the blessing of God on you. And they will connect to God through you. Because you became a man of God, a person of God. And because the godliness that is reviving you that is treasured inside of you will shine through your flesh out to the world and people when they will see you they will see God through you not gonna idolize you gonna enjoy the spirituality that you will spread the light that will shine through your aura to your surroundings to your community to your beloved ones to everyone around you we need to build our self-esteem 
to love ourselves, to accept ourselves no matter who we are. Because we've been created by the Creator, so there are no more questions about our shape, about how He made us to be. We are His handmaids. You have complaints? <laughs> you can write a letter, burn it, let the smoke go back to heaven, and He will answer your questions shortly. <laughs> Nothing to do. You know that He knows better than you how to create you and how to create the world. And He knows exactly why He made you how you are, like you are, and why He made... That's what He wants, and He knows exactly why. And there is a purpose and a cause for everything in this creation. So we should just accept it with love, and to just work on being good as much as we can, and to spread that good and that love in the world to everyone that asks for it, and to be as kind and nice as we can. And that's where my speech is finished for tonight. Thank you very much. I bless you that all your prayers will be answered from heaven immediately when you'll ask them. And that you'll find everything you seek for and looking for on your in, close to your doorstep early in the morning when you wake up. That all your prayers and respect, requests will be answered. Amen. Can you have some? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.